Okay, thank you. We're excited. Doris Hornstein will be our spotlight speaker. Doris Hornstein, best-selling author, positive intelligence coach, and professional public speaker, was born and raised in Israel and moved to Portland after completing her service as an officer in the Israel Defense Forces. She has worked in Jewish education for more than 30 years. Today, the world is her classroom. Doris believes that positivity is an inside out job and it can be taught so others are inspired and learn to use their own mental fitness practice to achieve their ultimate goal, fulfillment, purpose, and happiness. With her multiple award-winning book, Moments of the Heart, for relationships everyone should have to live wholeheartedly, Doris, the relationship navigator, uses personal stories, the Hebrew language, Jewish wisdom, and tools in positive intelligence to strengthen mental fitness, inspire others, and cultivate positive relationships for living an enjoyable, healthy, and focused life. In Doris's 20-minute talk, she will share Becoming Unsinkable, Shift from Sink to Soar. The waves are the events you experience, the ocean is your life, and the ship is you. How do you relate to your ship? How do you not only keep your head above water, but swim with the waves? In this session, Doris will share with us her story, a wave that will strengthen each of us, illuminating the champion from within, allowing us to soar high and become unsinkable. Please join me in welcoming my good friend, Doris Hornstein, to share with us today, and also remind her to start her speaker timer. Woohoo! You're missing your standing. I am, your I am ready. You're missing your I, sitting, ob sitting ovation. <laughs> I am ready. I was just trying to do the timer, but I'm going to use my computer timer and we will go with that. Take an imaginary trip with me. No coronavirus, no pandemic, no danger in the air. Cruises are safe popular, and even desirable. Summer of 2015, my husband and I decided to go on a cruise to Alaska. First time without the children. We were so excited. 10 days of bliss. We boarded in Seattle for these 10 days. Time to just exhale and say, ah, do you know that this kind of exhale ah, is actually built into our DNA, into all human beings' DNA. The word in Hebrew for human is Adam, Adam. Do you know this guy from the Bible? No clothes on. <laughs> yeah, that guy, okay? Adam, built of two syllables, ah and dam. Ah encompasses the spirit within the human being. It's where our soul resides. That's why it doesn't have a hard sound because just like spirit, it's open-ended. It will allow anything to come in as long as you allow it. Dumb, on the other hand, means blood. And it signifies the physicality of all of us. We all have blood cells, muscles, ligaments that work in a certain way. So what is, in essence, Adam? The combination, the sum of the physical and the spiritual. We all may look different on the outside, but on the inside, we are all the same. The same. We're all striving to be the best Adam that we can be. So back to the cruise. We arrive at the dock in Seattle, and I don't know how many of you have taken a cruise to Alaska from Seattle, amazing. We got in, they checked our temperature. We moved into the next step. The next step, once we boarded the ship, was evacuation drill. They gave us these orange vests, flotation devices, and told, told us what to do in case we need to disembark the ship. We nodded. We have done this many times before flying, so this one was no different. And then we went on to the open deck. 
we sat on these recliner chairs. They served us champagne as we heard the loud blast of the cruise ship horn bidding Seattle goodbye. Ta goodbye. People were enjoying the festivities. The energy was positive. Our cruise has begun. So what did we do next? I'm in the mindset that it's really wise to start with exercise. And I know it could relate to several of you here, right? Why? Because cruises, I think, are famous of getting people a little heavier on the way out than the way in. So my husband agreed, and we quickly changed our attire, and we went to the gym. The gym was located on the top floor of the ship. The view, spectacular. After stretching, and warming up, we, I climbed the Stairmaster. Then I start going, looking at the view in front of me. What glorious sight, what serenity, working on the ocean. How lucky can a person be? But suddenly I felt, I had this sensation that the ship was turning around. What, what was going on? Shortly after, we overheard the loudspeaker. Dear passengers, this is your captain speaking. We have detected a fire in the engine of the ship. I need everybody to be calm, not to panic, and return to your cabin for further instruction. vacation is that? <laughs> Fire in the belly of the ship. Hmm. Interesting. Now, contrary to what you may think immediately, I did not have my life flushed before my eyes. I didn't think this is going to be the Titanic. Okay. Yes, I was a bit anxious, but I thought to myself, this is not going to be my swan song. We go back to Seattle. But it made me think about the concept, fire in the belly, fire in your belly. Now, when I say fire, it can mean both positive fire and negative fire. The positive fire, it's the fire of determination, of perseverance, of energy, of purpose, of getting where we wanna go and knowing what to do. How many times have you said to yourself, like I have said to myself, Doris, you are on fire, <laughs> right? You've said that, but sometimes we have the negative fire and that fire can burn us, can consume us. It can ruin us and all the good relationships and what we have done in our lives. In positive intelligence terms, we call it saboteurs. I call it self-defeating behavior. Let me share with you one more Hebrew gem. The word for fire in Hebrew is esh, two letters, esh. The word for a person in Hebrew is ish, three letters, the same two letters plus one more tiny, the tiniest Hebrew letter in the alphabet. That tiny letter is called yud and it symbolizes the ultimate good. Now, I call the ultimate good God. Some other people can call it nature, the spirit, the force, the universe, whatever you call it, that power which is outside of us. So when the word a person missing that small letter, all that remain is fire. I want you to think of fire-like qualities that play a devastating role in marriages, in work, in your friendships, in relationships with other people. And that negative fire, that self-sabotaging behavior prevents us from being the best Adam, Adam, the best human that we can be. Now, before you sit and relax back and you say, that ain't mine. I don't have any saboteurs. I don't have any self-defeating behavior. Let me bring reality check. 
we all have something. I have it, you have it, the world has it. We just mask it in a different way. For some of us, it's controlling. I'm, I raise my hand on that one. For others, it's an avoider or a pleaser or hyperachiever or victim feeling like everything is done to you. You have no control. We all have that. But here's one common negative fire that is universal, that everybody, regardless, regardless of their gender, regardless of their culture, regardless of the language they speak, they all have, we all have it. And that's the fire of judgment, judging ourselves, God, how idiot could I be? You know, I'm, no, I'm not good at this. I'll never be successful. You know, judging others, they are the idiots. It's because of them that that's what happened to us or to me or judging the circumstances. If it wasn't for coronavirus, I would be so much better off. If it wasn't for the situation here, I would be so much better off or that's why I'm so bad. That fire of judgment is common among everybody. And what is the commonality between the, all the negative fires, all of them? They all come from a place of fear. So I wanna ask you, is there a fear that is burning in your belly? A fire that can consume you and everything good that you have created? Ask yourself, what is the fear that you are holding on? You see, just as the ship I was on, our fire may not be apparent to many people, but at a certain time, it becomes unavoidable. And then we become aware and we realize that we need to change something. We need to make a change. Here's my line when I say to many people, when the pain is too great, change becomes a necessity. When the pain is too great, pain, change becomes a necessity. Now here's a question. Can we change? Can we change our fire from a negative fire to a positive fire? From a negative mindset to a positive mindset? And the answer is a resounding yes. In positive intelligence, we call it shift from the saboteur mindset to the sage mindset, to where our wiser being exists, to where creativity, empathy, a place that stems out of love, not out of fear. When we don't allow this negative fire to consume us any longer, and instead we choose to bring the light from within to illuminate our path and where we wanna go, then and only then can we become unsinkable. But we need to make a choice. We need to decide. We need to choose our flotation devices. What is a choice that you can make? Do you wanna sink? Or do you want to soar? Do you wanna give in to the negative fires, to the fears? Or do you want to give opportunity to the positive fires to come within you? You see, I believe that we can float on the waves of positive fire. Those waves make up your life. Waves that encompass empathy, curiosity, love, exploration. Each one of us can navigate our own ship where we want to dock safely. We docked back in Seattle, our ship went back to Seattle and it docked for 24 hours while they fixed the engine of the ship. And then we were on our merry way to Alaska for not 10 days, but nine days. But you see, that's what life is. Life, life is full of twists and turns. That's the journey we take. We may not know the destination, 
but we can have the vision of where we want to go. So I want you to imagine your life as the ocean is your life. The waves that coming up against your ship are the events that happened in your life. And then the ship is you. Always changing because we human beings change. Our skin changes, our cells change. Let's allow our insides to change as well. To have new opportunities for new experiences, to rise up, to be the best Adam, the best human that you can be. So today I invite you to reflect on these changes that you wanna make on the tweaks that you desire. Because I do believe that the power is within each and every one of us. And once we change, modify and extinguish the hot boiling negative fire that is in our belly, we become unsinkable. We can ride the waves of life, the events in our lives without regrets.